Hako, known as Artist Poet on PlayStation Network, and in Minecraft, if you do crossplay, you can find me on PlayStation as Artist Poet as well. So, this is basically a reaction video to Fallout and Cacus and, um, well, just about anybody else who's talked about the state of the game as of the season of Worthy. Um, I got really jazzed up and fell into the hype when Bungie kept going on about this was the season everybody wanted to play. You're really going to want to do everything you can to make your characters uh, at level and ready to dive in. Uh, so I did find that the Seraph Bunker activities are pretty fun. They kind of feel like a junior-sized version of the Escalation Protocols. Um, mechanically, they run more or less like that, although we're not throwing burning spheres at another little burning sphere in the Escalation Protocol. It is uh, it is a style of play that I enjoy <clears throat> in first-person shooters, which is, you know, uh, us versus the Horde or an arena kind of combat kind of uh, feel. Um, Prison of Elders, you know, if everybody remembers that from Destiny 1, was like the thing that I did. Uh, and, of course, Iron Banner. Anytime Iron Banner came out, everything else was, you know, didn't even look at it except for Zer. Uh, I just did Iron Banner. Um, but since Destiny 2, even Iron Banner has kind of felt like, yeah, more of the same. And a lot of players are feeling that. A lot of the feedback that's coming up from the game state is uh, so much more of the same. And talk, God, capping that off with all the different connection problems and the error codes and the lag, and then Trials of Osiris hits, and they try to introduce a couple of new things. Like, they took out... They, we don't get bounties anymore, but instead you earn tokens, and then those tokens are cashed in to Saint-14 to get a randomly rolled weapon on a randomly <clears throat> designed loot table. And uh, and people are getting farmed for tokens in Trials. Uh, Cacus and Fallout both commented on this, that there's a, uh, a group of uh, Pinnacle players you know, they either they go flawless and then they spend the rest of the weekend just getting up to three wins to get tokens so they can go ahead and spend them at Saint-14 to get weapons. And a lot of them have suggested that, well, maybe if they didn't take the tokens away, this might not happen, but I think it would happen no matter what. Uh, just letting people to keep their tokens, though, would help, you know, keep some of the players who are being farmed for token wins. Um would would at least feel like, oh, well, it's still worth it playing because I'm still able to get something at the end of the week, and even though I was, you know, another team's whipping boy for, you know, three days straight, it's it's a brutal way to see it, but it is the way it is. And so their suggestion is like, you know, hey, don't delete the tokens or, you know, whatever. Um, my addition to that, other than the fact that don't delete the tokens, I think you should be able to stockpile them, whatever. You know, it doesn't really matter. Um it, it's it. This comes down to this one point I'm going to make right now. Bungie, since the launch of Destiny 2, and I don't know what changed in the development house that made this feel like this is happening. It might not be official policy, but it, it feels like this. And if you take this perspective in with you next time you play, <clears throat> you might see it too. Uh, Bungie is putting balance of the game on our shoulders, on the players' shoulders. Yes, they buff and they nerf, they tweak here and there, they add, they subtract some stat rolls and stuff like that, but balancing a gun is not balancing a game. Balancing an armor piece is not balancing the game. The game itself is in is out of balance, and it's not the player's base that's the responsible party for this. Just like when you get babooned or bead or air or aardvart or... Uh, I can't remember any of the error codes. They always, their splash screen says it's your problem that you're not connected. Like they immediately assume that we're all just going, we're all just using Walmart or McDonald's Wi-Fi to play their game or something. Like we're all playing from like handheld devices or something. That's rude, first of all. It's bad customer service and bad customer relations to begin with. And it's it's been a salt point for me for a very long time. Um, but now I've, now I've just kind of like, I just get, I'm over it now. I'm done with it. <clears throat> I get two of those codes in a, in a session. I stop playing and I go somewhere else, you know. And if I'm playing in a group of people, I will say I'll tell them specifically why I'm leaving. Is it because Bungie keeps saying it's my problem that they can't keep their game stable? Well, there's a reason why their game can't be stable. First of all, it's the peer-to-peer -peer connection thing, which is supposed to organically connect you with people on a regular basis. That you 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 you're, you reside within a player pod, 
All right. There's a there's a semi stable pool of players that is always going to be on at the time you're on because they're in your local pod. Now, peer to peer used to mean that if I logged on, the chances of me finding somebody in my hometown playing alongside me were pretty high, and that's kind of the way you know my fire team right now is. Now, the, the two people I play with, one lives in my household. Uh, and that's by design, obviously. But the other guy, you know, he lives, you know, another small town away. But we're, you know, he's local, basically. IRL, the, th the three of us can meet up pretty easily. So peer-to-peer -peer was supposed to be kind of like that. Now I think it's more about, you know, Bungie has placed you into a pool of players that play at a similar time uh, in a similar activities. And this is why when you get into, you start seeing the same players. It's not at least two or three other players who may be on satellite or, uh, or, or transcontinental cable. You know, in other words, you're playing with somebody from the UK, either satellite or, or transatlantic cable, or you're playing with somebody from Hawaii, again, through Pacific cable or satellite. Um, and it's really, it's disheartening to be kicked out of a match so close to the win. It's the win you need to complete X number of bounties, and then the game tells you it's your fault when it's not. And that's just, that's that stop. Okay, so I'm going to get that little rant out of the way. So... The instability in the game, the constant error codes, the uh, shenanigans, uh, both in uh, PC and uh, console, because it is in console. A lot of a lot of PC players are saying, that, "Hey, we're getting you know problems here," but the truth is that it's all over the place. There are cheaters in both in all platforms: Xbox, PlayStation, uh, Anthem. Not Anthem. What is it? Uh, that, that that one where you can play off your TV like without a console and shit. Uh, and then of course PC. So uh, it's it's everywhere. Um, and yeah, um, and I have an opinion on that too. I, 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 don't, I don't care that you wanna cheat, but because it, to me it, it feels like it's kind of a compliment that you think that my team and I are that good that you feel you need to whip out the lag switch or the wall hacks or the aim box. Uh, to you know, to get around our strategy and our skill. So go for it if you want to. But I will say this: that I don't rage about a loss from somebody who outplayed me. Um, but I feel I feel disappointed and cheated, literally. <laughs> uh, the the experience feels less like an actual match and more like just you know I'm your I'm your stress therapist. And that's okay, I guess, but that's neither here nor there. <clears throat> Excuse me a second. <clears throat> so, you know, we talk about, you know, everyone's talking about the fact that Trials of Osiris has gotten toxic and it's unfun to play. Um, unless you're either in this cheater group or you're this flawless pinnacle group that's always going to win no matter what the fuck they do. For the guys out there who are winning and going flawless, understand that every time you win a match, it is somebody on the other side losing. And try to be appreciative of the fact that hopefully they put up a good enough challenge to make the game interesting and fun. And that, you know, appreciate the fact that you got that win, okay? You know, be appreciative of that win. Because if you just, you know, stomp through a lobby and you your takeaway is that you got the loot and that, oh, I'm gods, I can, you know, I can offer carries or whatever. Um, if you really feel you need that, then that's, that's okay. But try to remember that someday you're going to lose too, all right? Someday soon, probably even. But I want to. Do, this is the reason why we're looking at the bygones here, because one of the things that I've noticed in the game, especially in Destiny 2, back, back in Destiny 1, we had we had connection errors. There was lots of lag in the raids, but we stuck it out. We went through. We were able to play through the lag in Destiny 1. But in Destiny 2, you can't play through the lag for some reason. Something's different, where it's like you get lagged in the raid. It's like people just realize that we just can't play right now. We'll just have to come back. You know, we'll get the checkpoint and we'll hold on to it and we'll reload, you know, later in the day or maybe later in the week. And that's that's really sad because that's not sometimes people can't come back. So you start a raid with, you know, these five other people 
who want to play with you and you're having a great time, then you get a lag spike and it's like everyone just bails out. Now you've got checkpoints spread out all over across, you know, the network and things. And I mean, it's kind of disheartening. <clears throat> so what I've noticed, though, in Destiny 2 is that Destiny has always had a reputation for being a very beautiful game, a really pretty game. Um, these textures are amazing. The models are amazing. Um... I mean, look at that. I mean, everybody know anybody who knows graph, uh, computer uh, assisted design, drawing, or whatever like that. These all come from polygons, and polygons all have sharp angles. You know, uh, there may be a, you may draw a circle, but it, that circle is actually a, a, a series of, of small angles, and every point on that polygon is a bit of code, and then you start animating it. Now, this ambient float that the gun has right here, that probably doesn't take that much, nor does the panning of my camera via the reticle here take very much. But that's going on all the time. We don't need that. They're talking about, and this is the thing I want to talk about. I can't, unfortunately I cannot show you in the video, I don't have the editing tools to do a screen and screen kind of thing or bring up a, a static shot. But, um, I looked at my, uh, after I watched Fallout's video about the lag and everything like that, and the fact that the game is, uh, has got so much in it, you know, he keeps going on about it, it's got so much content, it's, everything is there, blah, 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 why aren't we accessing more of it, why aren't we changing it up, um, I looked at my storage, and Destiny sits at about 113, something like that, gigabytes, compared to a full-on MMORPG like Elder Scrolls Online, which is really just kind of sitting around 80. Now, whether I pay for ESO Plus or not, all that content is on my console. I have access to all that content. I'll just play the ESO Plus and I'm unlocking dungeons and regions uh, and all that stuff. So what is different about the code and the architecture of Destiny where, let's be fair, um, ESO has way more actual interactive content than Destiny does. Uh, they have active NPCs with real dialogue. Now, I know the Destiny Tower does too, but I can't. I can't pick their pockets. I can't assassinate them. I can't engage them in two, three-line conversations. This, I can't even bounce into them. You know, in the Elder Scrolls, this this NPC would be a physical NPC, and if I crouched behind them as a as a rogue, which is the class I play, I could steal from them. And yet, this NPC is part of a world that is a good 20% fatter than my actual, uh, than this actual game here. Uh, and it's all about, it's all down to the animations. It's all down to the textures and stuff. I think that's what it comes down to, is that they, they're over-animating things. They're over-complicating their models. They're over-coding a lot of different stuff. So if Destiny wants to, like... Because they're talking about, there's been a talk on the network that Destiny's developers have been talking about taking things away to make room for new things to come in. That there's this, like, you know, uh, you know, storage cap on consoles, blah, blah, blah. Well, that storage cap is because, you know, you don't want a game that's too bloated and because there's only so much that the consoles or any device can chug along with. Use your new synthesizer to create a vote from this. It's found in. Oh, that's what I got to do. Okay. So, yeah. So, a suggestion to the bunch of developers. Instead of, like, pulling away content that we all want to keep, you know, playing, um, maybe maybe streamline the content a bit more. Maybe, you know, maybe, maybe I don't need to see that wave of effects, that particle effect down there at the bottom of my warlock. Maybe I don't need to see this, you know, color shifting particle effect right here. Maybe my ghost doesn't need to bob up and down so much, you know, um, that kind of thing. You know, uh, that's that's all, you know, little things like that. They can, that can go away, and people aren't really going to notice. Or if they do notice, they're all they're going to get over it way faster than taking away, say, an entire planet. You don't need to get rid of an entire planet. Um, although if you do, you know, there's no point. You know, that that would just cause a lot of problems with people trying to get loot from that planet um, because you have those vendors. Now, there's something else you can streamline. Um, you can get rid of the planet-specific vendor bounties, okay? Uh, maybe even possibly relegate the vendors to just uh, some, you know, redundant activity. Like, instead of the vendors offering just planetary bounties, 
maybe the vendors offer strikes bounties you know maybe they can offer some of the strike bounties because not every bounty that Zavala has here depends on being in a strike a lot of this stuff you can complete on patrols let's see if he's got some in here oh I don't have bounties available here because I haven't done this part of my warlock well you would understand what I'm saying like you know cast supers it doesn't say if it's in the strike or not and I've actually been able to complete some vanguard bounties in patrols once upon a time patrol bounties came from Zavala came from the vanguard uh, you could do that. It was it was perfectly fine. Uh, Cade, Arcora, Zavala. They all offered patrol bounties. Maybe go back to that. And then you can cash in the bounties at the vendors and get the guns from the vendors on the planets. You know, So the vendors are a point where you can spend your Vanguard tokens, uh, but you don't need to collect you know that specific material for that planet. And then maybe that's something else too. Maybe consolidate the economy a bit more, so we're not running around with, you know, because uh, all this takes code. All this takes memory. All right. It, it may not be accessible to us on our consoles, but it has to be accessible on the server. So instead of needing to have like that, 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 and that, it could all just be that. You know, you get these. You get the Vanguard. Uh, to, not the Vanguard. Not the Boons. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong thing. You get these things. Okay, these little token thingies. Um, you know, just like you get these from all planets, you know, uh, the encrypted ones are key to specific bunkers, so that's okay. So, you know, maybe uh, maybe EDZ only offers kinetic weapons, and maybe the Titan only offers heavy weapons, and maybe IO only offers energy weapons. You know, there's, there's, there's a, there's a, uh, there's a curated weapon offered through... Uh, each of the strikes and each of the uh, planets. So maybe the vendors offer that, but use a unifying singular economy consumable. You know, it's either a crucible token or it's a vanguard token or it's a gambit token. And then you go to the relevant vendor vendors for it. If you want, you know, if you want to cash those uh, tokens in with spider on the tangled shore, you use the vanguard token. If you want to cash in your tokens, um, uh, for Crucible, you have the one vendor, which is, you know, Shax. You have Iron Banner tokens, because it is a lot of fun then as well, because at the end of Iron Banner, I might, well, let's go back to my inventory. I'll show you how many Iron Banner tokens I have. Come on. I have 58 now. At, earlier today, I had something like, you know, 200 or so. Chances are I'm not going to use these. Because I've done Iron Banner on all three of my characters. They've all gotten whatever they can. There's really not that many guns in Iron Banner that I'm interested in getting. Because personally, they, they're kind of trash. Um, so give me an option to trade these in for Crucible tokens. Or exchange these at Shacks for Crucible weapons. You know, so, you know, just, just you have event-specific tokens that can be exchanged in for, you know, whatever they most equate to, Vanguard or Crucible. Uh, like, for instance, the Seraph Bunker Warmind Bits, you know, at the end of the season, when these all, you know, when the season goes away, these obviously will go away, uh, give you the option to trade them in for, you know, uh, I don't know, things like, you know, Rainmakers or Pure Matter Glasses or, you know, maybe you turn them into, um, you know, war, uh, Vanguard tokens, not the Boons. I'm, I keep showing these because that's all I have in my inventory. I haven't done any strikes yet this week. I've been playing Iron Banner, like I said. So, you know, simplify the economy, simplify the code on the models. You know, we don't need all the extra special animations. Yeah, when you're in the middle of a mayhem match, it's kind of fun to have a strobing scream of Caesar-inducing uh, lights and shit. That's all fine and good, but, you know, not necessary. There's plenty of games out there that get by with what they do, and they're still just as enjoyable to watch and, and to be happy with. The other thing is, is that... Uh, way back in Destiny 1, one of the developer streams bragged about the fact that everything you see in the game is a three-dimensional model rendered in the game. Maybe that doesn't need to be the case. You know, it's yes, it's kind of nice to see that going on down there in the city. You know, that looks like a, you know, but seriously, when was the last time anybody actually stood up here and just kind of goggled this? You know, you can't even see it in first person unless you stand your back up against a wall somewhere like, uh, whoop, there I go, and died. Yeah. 
so yeah maybe simplify a little bit of the graphics take out some of those extra animations that kind of stuff simplify the economy that alone would cut down on storage size because you won't need that many slots in your inventory for it all um, consolidate the loot tables a bit too you know I mean there's a lot of there's a lot of randomness in this game as it is when when you come to players connections and you know things like that you don't need a dozen different models for the same archetype really you know uh, I think random roles should be gone I think random roles should just be just taken out just you know all the guns are the curated roles and if you don't like a perk bring it to Banshee you know and say hey Banshee I got this weapon and uh, this is this is all fine and good here this this uh, wait where was it uh, this guy let's take this guy here uh, this guy only legendaries get to be rerolled uh, so I don't really want auto loading holster can I change that out for something else so you click on the perk and it brings up a list of materials that you can use like you know glimmer legendary shards maybe even enhancement cores or two and uh, you can you can pick and choose what you want for that role you know and I think if you if if the game offered us not randomly re-rolling guns like back in Destiny 1 Banshee was able to do that but actually letting us pick the perks we want within that archetype okay that's the thing and we're still keeping archetypes unique like you know uh, what is this uh, an aggressive high impact frame so it's a high impact frame it's this low rate of fire it's a it's uh, it's got a you know high impact high high blast radius really slow velocity in other words you could dodge out of this rocket if you see it coming you really it's ridiculous but you can hey we're, we're guardian we're guardians we're god killers so we could do that but so within the archetype there's a every archetype has a set of perks that can roll with it and i can't bring up light gg right now but look it up l-i-g-h-t dot gg i think dot com um look them up and they show you all the hidden stats and all the stats of the guns and plus an entire table of all the available perks and fallout and um Cacus use these guys a lot, use the databases a lot from them, uh, and other databases as well. But I'm just saying, this is a place you can go to look and see what the curated role is, if there's a curated version, and what the community recommendations are versus the activities you're doing. But take away random roles. You know, turn the game less from a grind for this particular weapon, for this particular role, to a farm for this particular weapon, and then I could farm for the materials to, uh, to re roll it to make it be happier you know in my hands kind of thing um, if there was more construction in the game and less destruction in other words give players the opportunity to say I don't want any rares regardless of what their power level is or their roles are I don't want any rares auto deconstruct rares into um, into actual you know materials that should be that could be an option too that that would save a lot of clog as well um, let's see what did I get here okay so I got by the I have been getting spammed with snipers on this warlock for a long time okay that's good rampager threat detector not threat detector is not really something you want on a sniper because I always see snipers as a long-range gun even though I see a lot of players no scoping through the thing like it's a musket um, reload speed is pretty good uh, but it's a three-round magazine and 72 rounds per minute so that's pretty fast for snipers you don't really need this this is a pretty shitty roll guess what's gonna happen to this gun I'm either gonna save it over the loot pool right now that I have all the guns I want it's deconstructed see what I'm saying garbage here we go threat detector and rangefinder now this this is the role you want roar of the bear is not the best but look at that velocity oh wow this is this is a really this is worth it this is worth it. See, I was going to infuse this into something else, but now this is a keeper. It only took me 300 tokens to get there. Like I said, I had 200 plus earlier this morning. So, yeah. Um, I would like to see, you know, strike-specific loot come back. I'd like to see Banshee being more integrated into the whole loot process. I would like to see you know standardized roles for guns in the let it be the curated version and if that's not if there's a perk in there you don't like let Banshee fucking pick it for you use planet use consumables the same materials that you use to masterwork a weapon 
or to infuse a weapon, uh, use those materials to, you know, swap out the perks on that weapon. And, you know, don't limit us to doing that. Let us keep our tokens. Uh, Event-specific and seasonal-specific tokens roll over to whatever base activity they are. Get rid of the vendor bounties. Get rid of the need for patrols. And, you know, the planetary vendors then become, you know, a, a keep the loot tables for those planetary vendors because there's a lot of guns on the planets that people are still farming for, but they can't get, you know, uh, because they have to spend those materials. And if you spend the materials at the vendor, then you don't get to use those materials for the upgrades that you do and everything else. So take away the planetary materials, materials put them all as one material, as one thing, you know, legendary shards. That works for everything. Uh, and maybe some Vanguard tokens for other things. Let me see what doodad over here is. Okay, so we do have bounties for uh, for trials, but none of them offer any loot. Now, see, I can remember because he takes tokens now. You 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 spend tokens to, on him, and he drops a random weapon in your hand. And of course, it won't be, you know, anything that anybody really wants to go for. Purchasing another trial passage. Okay, so I could purchase a trial, ferocity. Or mercy, yeah. Well, this doesn't matter because none of the people that I play with are actually that play trials are actually on right now. So, so there are bounties still. Like I said, I haven't tried out the trials of Osiris this year. All I've been hearing is a lot of negative feedback about you know less intense players being farmed deliberately by more intense players so they can spam tokens to get pinnacle rolls. <sighs> That right there in itself, that when you set up that dichotomy, you know, um, it just begs for exploitation. It really does. And I think Bungie is trying to find a way to balance the game, but it shouldn't be the players that are balancing the game. It should be the developers to balancing the game. It should be the curators of this game balancing the game. It should be, uh, you know, if you have a if you have a smaller gun pool, you have less concern about things being out of balance. The more parts you have in a system, the harder it is to balance that system because the more variance you have in the system. Now, if that's what they want, then stop buffing and nerfing shit. Let things stagnate into a singular meta until somebody either comes up with a counter meta or you rotate the whole loot table out completely. You know, and hey, if, I'm sorry, you, you missed out on, you know, the breakneck. Too bad. You know, maybe they'll bring it back next year. You know, like Time Lost Weapons were a fantastic addition back in that, uh, back in the Sundial, you know, uh, season. That was really great. Um, but, uh, you know, that's just kind of the thing. There's just a couple of su uh, suggestions. Uh, unify the economies, break them down to Gambit, Vanguard, and Crucible. Uh, you know, maybe, you know, shrink the need for planetary usage so that you can remove the entire planets but keep the strikes available. Uh, give us some fixed roles and uh, loot-specific tables again. Allow Banshee to re-roll specific perks so that we don't have uh, to uh, keep grinding for shit because we'd all rather be farming and binging. We would rather not have to grind. Uh, and that's, I think that's, a, that's about it. My, a 15 minute video has now become 30 minutes, which is par because I ramble. So let me know what your perspective is. Um, if you have a different take on what you think could be trimmed out of the game to improve its stability and, or to, uh, improve the player connectedness, uh, what you think would be, I mean, we don't need more content. We need different content because we keep getting more, but it's really all the same shit. I mean, the Seraph Bunker activities really are just Escalation Protocol uh, with the addition of a mechanic of throwing a relic, you know? I mean, give me a break. Uh, raid layers can be kind of fun. They're, you know, quick and dirty kind of stuff. Dungeons are just, you know, mechanics extraordinaire for people who like mechanics. That's fine. Uh, but, you know, maybe dump the scorn keep them only uh, in the, uh, you know, keep them only in their strikes. We don't need them in Gambit. Take the Taken out, except for, you know, Gambit, Gambit Prime. Uh, you know, I, I, I can't think of, I can't think of any narrative in the game right now that involves the Taken, that you need the Taken anywhere. In fact, I think the only place you can get Taken 
is on Earth and uh, and in Gambit. But um, yeah, some of the make the enemies make the enemies feel unique again. You know, when I go fighting a fallen, I don't want to think, oh, that's the same shit that Cabal and the in the Vex do, or that's the same shit that the Taken and the Hive do, or that's the same shit that the Scorn does, because it feels like that. You know, I mean, I know there's uh, there's many different ways to cook a hamburger, but it's still just a hamburger. Yet I'm going to argue that a chili burger and a bacon burger are completely different. You know, it's still a burger, but a chili burger is the chili burger, and a bacon burger is a bacon burger. That chili bacon burger is why? <laughs> you, can you really taste the difference between chili and bacon? I, I guess you could. Um, but when you're playing with a game like this, you know the playing pieces. It's like saying that you know you have you know, well, it's like you're playing with nothing but queens when you're playing chess. You know, have you ever played that kind of game before? Try it sometimes. Play with just a whole row of eight queens. You get eight queens. I get eight queens, and we play. It's basically just checkers. So, you know, unifying some things and diversifying others. And then, of course, trim that animation code down. We don't need all those special little pretty lights flickering all over the place. Uh, we don't need to see little, you know, strap links dangling at the tip of, you know, our gun butts or whatever. Um, consolidate the Consolidate the economy a little bit more here. Kind of bring us down to just three... You know, just to, just bring us down to the three different uh, tokens. You know, um, well, I don't think there is a gambit token actually. You just you just do gambit shit. That's it, isn't it? Uh, you have you know, I mean, a gambit can survive without tokens. So why can't the vanguard and the crucible survive without tokens? You know, how about that then? Just get rid of those altogether. Legendary shards are perfectly fine. Uh, silver, bright dust, and glimmer. We obviously wouldn't want silver. Or, or bright dust in there, but say glimmer and legendary shards are perfectly fine, and then of course you know the enhancement cores, uh, the enhancement prisms and the crystals, you know, upgrade materials and stuff like that. So I don't know. Let me know what your thoughts are. I'm sorry this uh, this video kind of went a little bit longer than I wanted it to. So if you got to this point, uh, fantastic, thanks, and uh, I'll see you in orbit. This has been Spinfoil TV. I have been your host, Hako. You can find me on PlayStation Network as Artist Poet, and I play a lot of games. Have fun.